Subaru EA82 motor, 1.8 variety, came out of that Loyal over there. If you're rebuilding one of these or doing a timing belt, this procedure is something that I've never seen before. Back of the engine here, if you scoot your eyes right into the top of that bell housing, you see three little marks. And then you've got a little indicator. This indicator needs to line up with the middle mark when you're setting your timing. I believe the other two marks are there in case you wanted to preset it for some advance or retard, but we're gonna go right in the middle. You got your crank here, and then you have two camshafts, one on either side. Subaru numbers these cylinders one, two, three, four. So one and two are your front cylinders, three and four are your back cylinders. One and three are passenger side, two and four driver side. It's a single overhead cam, but it's got two cams because of the style of engine. So you've got one cam here that's got a mark at the very top, that little hole we have it lined up already. That's how we're gonna start this inner timing belt is that hole needs to line up with the seam of the valve cover right there. Then on this side, we're gonna have this hole on this camshaft point straight down now, some of these dual cam motors, people are used to lining them both up, both down. This one is alternating, but it gets a little more complicated than that because after you install the inner timing belt, you have to rotate the crankshaft 100 or 360 degrees, then install this one, then rotate it 360 degrees again, and then go see if you're at top dead center, set your timing, and install your distributor. For demonstration purposes, so you can really see what's going on here, I'm gonna remove the crank pulley. And then you've got your two timing gears in here. See, this one has a lip right in the middle. This is your crank. So on the inner lip, that's your inner timing belt. Outer lip is your outer timing belt. So we'll slide this inner timing belt in down beneath that idler. Ended up setting this pulley to the maximum loose option. And then... Installing the crank pulley again And we're gonna go one full rotation with the crank which should move the camshaft one half of a rotation So this should be pointed straight down after we're done with the single rotation of the crank Yes, yeah. cool Six o'clock position lined up with the notch down there you come back over here, you rotate this camshaft, boom. So it's 180 degrees opposite, right? Then, outer timing belt. Sitting here trying to figure this out, and then Dale came in and pointed out that tension's from the top, not the bottom. So you go over the belt, and then around the gear. Confirm our alignment over here. Looks, Looks good. good. Got our tension set. Now we're gonna turn the crank another 360 degrees. Again, that's only 180 on the camshafts. We got one at the high mark there on the driver's side, one at the low mark on the passenger side. Then we go to the back of the engine. And we also know we didn't lose any time on the crank because we're right back where we started with that middle position. So now we're gonna set this to zero degrees at top dead center on the number one cylinder. So just watch this crank. That's 10. Nope. Went just a hair too far. Right there. That should be zero top dead center on the number one cylinder. And the other benefit of having the spark plugs out is you can actually scoot your eyes right into that spark plug hole. We're gonna need a little better light in here. You're gonna look to see if the piston is at the top of that cylinder. Scoot your eyes in on the number one there. I took the plug off. You can see that's the number one cylinder for the distributor cap. And on this distributor, cap sits on just like this. We want the rotor pointed at the number one cylinder, just like that. But 
we're going to have to get this gear lined up with the gear on the camshaft. And these distributors can get kind of tight, so you got to hit them with the hammer gently. Perfect. Nope. Nope. Distributor move. Yep. Boom. Yep. With this gear here, it's fixed to the camshaft. This movement here is just to advance or retard your timing on the distributor itself, but all of the gears need to match with this right at the number one cylinder. So we're gonna take our distributor cap and confirm. I would say that's pretty that's, that's pretty good. That's a win. Confirm you're locked in that this isn't gonna move without engine rotation. Now we can bolt these down and then we can kind of get our timing adjusted from there. But this should fire off enough for us to at least get the engine idling and then make our final adjustments. We're gonna finish putting this thing back together, throw it in the car, fire it off, and let you take a look at that. The teaser is. The teaser is.